Today, we're gonna to take a look at six portfolio templates, free and paid, that you guys can use right now to, number one, either improve your templates, or number two, if you're starting from scratch, create something that is amazing from the get-go. Let's dive right in. So the first template we're gonna cover is gonna be Frank Ford. This template here goes for $49 on Framer. I'm gonna do links to everything that we're gonna look at in this video in the description. So anyways, let's get started. On Reload, we'll see that we get this nice effect of the text popping up from the top. This can be your name and maybe we could apply it to be the name of the actual company that we're working for if we want this to be a portfolio project. But anyways, that is what we have right now. We have the name and then on hover over these divs, we get number one, Jeep Wrangler. So the text of the, the heading of the project, we get this icon here that shows us that it's gonna take us to another tab. And then we get an increase in the size of the image. When we click it, we see that we get the title of the project, so Jeep Wrangler. We see that it's a campaign, the year, the client, and this is gonna be pretty similar with a lot of these portfolio projects. I made my own video about the best type of portfolio page to have, and it covers the same core things. Number one, it's gonna be the scope of the project. Number two, your involvement in the project. Number three, client, time, sometimes budget, things like that. So that aspect of it is gonna be quite similar with a lot of these sites, but anyways. We see that we have the text on the left is sticky to the top, which makes it very nice as an experience. When you scroll and you see the images, you can just look back and forth between the text and the images. I do believe that this is just kind of like dummy text, maybe not, but either way, it's a, it's a pretty nice portfolio to have in the beginning. And then we have this hover effect here where we see either publications or this can be sometimes like an archive for previous projects that they don't want to showcase here or just like like a playground almost and we want to showcase some other stuff but anyways clicking those links takes us to the framer site because i'm guessing it is a kind of like a dummy text and then clicking this magic button here opens up the gmail or the the mail to function where we can now write an email to someone although i would rename magic to something like get in touch contact, I don't know, something a bit more, a bit more obvious. We can click on work and this is really nice. We can see all the names of each and every company that this person has worked with or you have worked with. And on hover, we get that main image again, but it's as a kind of like a, a secondary thing rather than the primary thing. Whereas before the image was the primary and the name was the secondary, now it's flipped. And here what's cool is that we can also see campaign and down here editorial. So we can have different categories for these publications or these portfolio projects. And then finally clicking on about, we get this very simple page here which just gives us everything that we need. So next up, let's go with Studio Ferti Agency website template. This is a template that has number one, CMS involved in all the projects. So it's very simple to add new projects, to change how they look, where you want them to be, if you want it to be in a different category, if you wanna change the way the way that it's, it's sorted, it's very simple to be able to function with the CMS. Now we have this effect on the hero where on scroll, because this is a variable font, we have Ferte or the name of your studio or template, your, your site can reduce in thickness. And then there's also a blur effect where it blurs out the word Ferte or in this case, your studio name. It then snaps to the top of the nav once we reach the section and we have a horizontal scroll here. But for me, I'm still scrolling vertically but the site starts to scroll left to right. So that kind of snaps, scrolls and snaps off and then keeps going. This effect here is similar to the last site where we saw on hover, we can see the different images related to that portfolio piece. But let's go ahead and click on this and I am pretty sure it's gonna be similar. Yeah, so we have the year in which this project was created. We have some of the images, we have some dummy text, I believe here, and then we can explore more work. So this is where the CMS comes in because you can just add more and more and more projects and you don't need to worry about relinking this kind of stuff. You can just say, okay, click on the next one and that will be the the next project that comes up. What I like about this is that it's minimally styled, so there isn't a lot of opinion on how it should look apart from the blocked out sections. But apart from that, the font, the, the weight of everything, it's all very open to interpretation. So you can add in your own fonts here. You can add in your own colors, your own imagery, obviously. And so it, it doesn't feel like it's already done for you. You know, it's, it's the template where you can add a lot to it and still make your own. Whereas maybe the previous one was kind of already done for you with all the imagery and, and things like that. So when you click on services, we get this page where, what I like about this is that it has a unique layout to all these sections. Yes, we have kind of the hero header with text, 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 but the way that the, the text is laid out makes it feel 
Like it's not a boring site. And that is very important for a lot of studios. They want to feel and look like they're something other than just an ordinary studio. In this case here, we can see the CMS come in because we have categories for, for example, product design or creative development, we can kind of filter out these projects based on those categories. So here we can see recent creative development works. Okay, we have the name and then the year and then digital strategy. So we can segment out what these what these projects are, are about, which is really good in terms of organization. On to the next template here. Let's go ahead and check out danpetty.com. Dan Petty, if you guys don't know who this guy is, he's an animal when it comes to website design. He's not taking any clients right now, but anyways, you can see that his clientele is the MGM massive sphere, that thing in Las Vegas. And then if you click on his actual projects, you'll see that the budget or the cost for these projects are quite substantial. And when you see the turnaround time, only 12 days for 50K, it's quite crazy. So it's quite cool that he's giving away his portfolio for free as a clonable on Webflow. This is a, one of the one of the free ones that we're gonna take a look at today. But anyways, we can see that the core things of this portfolio page are all the same. We have number one, the title of the project, a short description, in this case, the cost, the turnaround time, where this client came from. This is interesting because for some reason he decides that this is important. For me, it would be something like maybe the client came from Twitter, from YouTube, from Google, and then who the design team is. So this is important because it shows potential clients what your role was in this project. So this is something that we can see here. Now, one thing is I would like to see a link to this actual project. There's nowhere where I can click it. I could just look this up, but if I'm on your portfolio, then I would like to see the real life link if you have one, because if not, it makes it feel like it's just a kind of like a dummy project that you're doing for, for the site, which is fine. But if you have a real life site, then you might as well, you know, put the, put the actual URL in there. One thing I just noticed is that the background color of this page changed regarding clicking a different one. So let's see if we can click on Goldfinch here. We have this kind of lighter brown, go on to the next one, see what that looks like. Warbler Labs, we get another color. Nice, so that looks like it is depending on the CMS as well. So we can set a different color per CMS project. And that is something that is very easy to do inside of Webflow. Next up is gonna be another Framer template. Now this one is extremely simple in terms of the visual, but that does not take away from the fact that it is a very nice project. So here we see the H1, which is gonna be the name of the person. Hey, I'm Jackson, I design software. And this is kind of like a another dummy template. That's the only issue with these templates is that a lot of the time they're kind of fake projects. And so you can't necessarily see what it would really look like if we had someone's real life projects on here. But in this case, we have this person's website that is actually in the same format as a software. So here we have a sidebar, we can close the sidebar, we can open it. And this gives us the same vibe as if we were in some type of software. So in this case, we can change the tab by clicking on the sidebar here. We can also use our keyboard here to change the different the different tabs, which is quite nice, I must say. And so this just gives us a different way of seeing what a portfolio could look like. You know, it doesn't necessarily need to be the same exact thing over and over and over. This gives personality to what the person is doing. If they're specialized in designing software, it makes sense that their portfolio is gonna look like a software and is gonna give off that hint that they know how to design software. You don't necessarily need to showcase the projects being, you know, this insane dribble board or anything like that. The portfolio itself is also a project a lot of times. Now there is a search bar here. I'm curious as to what we can actually search for. I'm gonna type in stack and wow, that actually comes up. So this is a great example of a portfolio that incorporates what this person wants to be hired for and is clearly showing that inside of their portfolio. So there's no debate that this person can design software. This is quite standard when it comes to software, you know, it's gray and white and there's nothing, there's nothing really crazy about this, but it's very easy to use. The UX is phenomenal. The UI is also clearly there. So this is the type of portfolio that a lot of people love to see when they're hiring. One thing about the projects that I think is really neat is, and I'm just in projects here, click on life log. And we, what I really like here is number one, that we're stating the challenge, the solution, and then the outcome. That is the most important thing in terms of a portfolio, apart from the name, the deadline, the, the cost sometimes not necessary, but being able to showcase clients what 
actually matters inside of a project is really important. Being able to showcase what you did in terms of that project is all clients really care about. And in this case, in these small paragraphs, we can see that now again, this is going to be kind of like a fake project, but still it showcases what we can actually do with this portfolio. Anyways, on to the next one. There's two left, so stick with me here. But this next one is also going to be Framer. So in this case, we have a more playful portfolio, which is quite nice. The last one was quite software based, quite, you know, quite corporate almost. But this one is a lot more playful. So we have this person's picture in the front. Hi, I'm Larry and branding. Maybe instead of branding, it should say I like branding or I do branding or something like that. But anyways, on hover on this profile picture, it says scroll down and know me better. That is quite nice. It's a nice little monogram that tells us that we can go ahead and scroll to see more. This gives us a brief introduction. I'm not sure if anyone's gonna sit around and read three paragraphs of text just like that. But anyways, apart from that, it gives us the option to read the CV, which takes in this case to this person's Twitter, but you could obviously add in a PDF or even by clicking this button, it anchors it to your CV inside the site. But anyways, a couple of testimonials here, the stack. So similar to the other project from the software developer, and here we see a couple services. Now this is quite standard, but I think the most important thing from this project was the initial animation that we saw here in the in the hero. Just having this hero header stand out to someone could be the difference between your portfolio getting noticed and not. Now it would be nice to have more interactivity with these shapes if you're gonna add them in. I see that they're floating and they're this, there's this kind of parallax effect and they increase in size as well, but maybe it would be nice to have these as actual 3D objects as we can do now with Spline. But other than that, it's a nice single page portfolio. And then we can obviously click into these projects to see more. That's a nice interaction. Actually, if we click on this, we get the images related to the project that kind of explode out. And then we get kind of the problem, the solution, all the all the lovely stuff that I like to see. Last one is going to be this one from Jonas Arleth. And it's a free clonable, I believe. Yes, it is. What I like about this is that it's not necessarily a portfolio, but it is the animation that leads you into the portfolio. So this hero header animation is something that you can apply to a lot of different sections, a lot of different sites as well. And so being able to reproduce this onto other sections makes your site stand out and elevate. And you don't, it, it's not that complicated when it comes to actually creating this. And if you can clone it in Webflow or you can actually see the site itself and how it's made, then it's easier to introduce it into your own projects. So you could have any of the other projects that we included in this list, but then you add in this kind of open effect into your site and that alone is quite a cool interaction. So I just wanted to share that quick little thing that I quite liked, but anyways, actually here inside of the, the Webflow site, let me see if there's any custom code. There's not. So let's see what kind of interactions we've got going on here. So section page intro, and then we just have all this good stuff going on here. So we can see everything that's happening here and how we can actually reproduce this onto our own projects. So this is amazing. This is why I love templates and clonables. But anyways, guys, that's been six or seven, I'm not sure, clonables and templates that you guys can create using Webflow and Framer. If you guys have any questions or wanna see any of these, they're always gonna be in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.